Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. The last time we reviewed an Oppo phone, it was the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom, a great flagship with a pop-up selfie cam. But for people on more of a budget, we've just received the mid-range option, the Oppo Reno Z. So let's check it out. First, let's open up this box. Take this plastic off and open the lid. We have a small package here. Nothing inside though, except for some paperwork. Put that aside, and now we have the phone itself. It looks nice, with some vibrant colors. I like it. Under the phone is an included silicon case. The case is pretty dark and opaque, so it'll definitely take away some from the phone's looks. Next, we have some included earbuds. Now these are regular headphones, as there is a 3.5mm jack on the Reno Z. There's a 20 watt Vogue charger, which should charge the phone's 4000mAh battery pretty fast. And finally, the USB-C cable. And a SIM ejector tool. So now that we have the Reno Z in our hands, let's go over its key features. The Reno Z is a good looking phone. It's made from glass on the front and the back, but with a plastic frame. Ours is the Aurora purple model, and this gradient metallic finish is quite nice, with green accents here and there. On the front is a 6.4 inch AMOLED display with a 1080p resolution. It's protected by Gorilla Glass 5, and it looks good. There's even HDR10 support. Unlike the more expensive Reno 10x Zoom, there's no pop-up mechanism for the selfie cam. Instead, it sits at the top of the screen, within a small water drop notch cutout. The Reno Z isn't without its cutting edge features though. Under the display sits an optical fingerprint scanner that works quite well. The Reno Z comes with MediaTek's new Helio P90 chipset. It's the first time we've had it in our hands, so it'll be interesting to test out. The P90 is MediaTek's latest and greatest, and it's built on a 12 nanometer process. It also includes a dedicated chip for AI-driven tasks. The Reno Z will come with 4, 6, or 8 gigs of RAM, depending on the market, and performance should be pretty great. The user interface here is Oppo's ColorOS 6 over Android 9 Pie, quite different from stock Android. Not everyone is a fan of it, but it does provide plenty of custom features, like a game space and performance boost options for gaming. A stereo speaker setup is one feature from the Reno Z that's above its pay grade. There's a speaker down at the bottom, and the earpiece acts as the second speaker. Like I already mentioned, there's a 3.5mm audio jack, and headphones come in the box. You get Dolby Atmos sound here too, but no FM radio. The Reno Z has a 48 megapixel camera with a quad bear filter, so photos will come out in 12 megapixels. It's quite similar to a lot of phones coming out these days. If those other phones are any indication, photo quality during the day should be quite nice. We'll have to see how nighttime images hold up with a dedicated night mode. You don't have an additional ultra-wide or telephoto camera here, just a 5 megapixel cam for depth sensing and portrait mode. Most phones nowadays offer at least 3 cameras, so we'll have to see if this is enough for the Reno Z to stay competitive. So there you have it guys, the Oppo Reno Z looks like a nice mid-ranger with some quality features. We have reports that it'll go for somewhere in the 300 euro range, which is cheaper than a lot of the competition, so this could be a pretty good deal. What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.